ഓം നമോ ഭഗവതെ വാസുദേവായ ഓം നമോ ഭഗവതെ വാസുദേവായ ഓം നമോ ഭഗവതെ വാസുദേവായ ചാപ്റ്റർ ത്രീ കർമ്മയോഗ ടെക്സ്റ്റ് വൺ അർജുന ഉവാച്ച ജായസിമനസ്തെ വാക്യന ബുദ്ധേ മോഹായ ശിവ മേ തദ് ഏകം വദ നിഷ്ഠിത്യേന ശ്രേയോഹം അപ്നുയം മൈ ഇൻ്റലിജൻസ് ഇസ് ബിവിൽഡ് ബൈ യുവർ ഇക്വി വോക്കൽ ഇൻസ്ട്രക്ഷൻസ് ദയഫോർ പ്ലീസ് ടെൽ മീ ഡിസൈസിവ്ലി വിച്ച് വിൽ ബി മോസ്റ്റ് ബെനിഫിഷ്യൽ ഫോർ മീ ടെക്സ്റ്റ് ത്രീ ശ്രീ ഭഗവാൻ ഉവാച്ച ലോകേസ്മിൻ വിവിധ നിഷ്ഠ സർവീസ് ഫ്രീഡം <coughs> everyone is forced to act helplessly according to the qualities he has acquired from the modes of material nature therefore no one can ref- not even for a moment text 6 ഇന്ദ്രിയാഥാൻ ിയർ <laughs> perform your prescribed duty for by doing so is better than not working one cannot even maintain one's physical body without work text 9 yagnarthat karmano nyatra ലോകോയം കർമ്മബന്ധന തദ് അർത്ഥം കർമ്മ കൗന്തേയ മുക്ത സംഗ സമാചര വർക്ക് ഡൺ ആസ് എ സാക്രിഫൈസ് ഫോർ വിഷ്ണു ഹാസ് ടു ബി പെർഫോംഡ് അദർവൈസ് വർക്ക് കോസസ് ബോണ്ടേജ് ഇൻ ദിസ് മെറ്റീരിയൽ വേൾഡ് ദേർഫോർ ഓ സൺ ഓഫ് കുന്തി പെർഫോം യുവർ പ്രിസ്ക്രൈബ് ഡ്യൂട്ടീസ് ഫോർ ഹിസ് സാറ്റിസ്ഫാക്ഷൻ ആൻഡ് ഇൻ ദാറ്റ് വേ യു വിൽ ഓൾവേസ് റിമെയിൻ ഫ്രീ ഫ്രോം ബോണ്ടേജ് Text 
Prasavishyadavam Eshavosvi is the Kamaduk. In the beginning of creation, the Lord of all creatures sent forth generations of men and demigods, along with the sacrifice for Vishnu, and blessed them by saying, Be thou happy by this yagna sacrifice, because its performance will bestow upon you everything desirable for living happily and achieving liberation. Text 11. Devan bhava yattane na te deva bhava bhava yantu vaha parasparam bhava bhava yantaha shreya param avapsyata. The demigods, being pleased by sacrifice, will also please you, and thus, by cooperation between men and demigods, prosperity will reign for all. Text 12. Istan bogan hivo deva dasyante yagna bhavitaha te datan apradi apyo yobum te stena evasa. In charge of the various necessities of life, the demigods, being satisfied by the perform performance of yagna sacrifice, will supply all necessities to you. But he who enjoys such gifts without offering them to the demigods in return is certainly a thief. Text 13. Yagna sistanita santo muchyante sarva kilbishai puchan pun chate totwe agampapa ye pachanti atma karanat. The devotees of the Lord are released from all kinds of sins because they eat food which is offered first for sacrifice. Others who prepare food for personal sense enjoyment verily eat only sin. Text 14. Anad Bhavanti Bhutani Parjanyad Anasambhavaha Yagnad Bhavati Parjanyo Yagna Karma Samudbhavaha. All living bodies subsist on food grains, which are produced from rains. Rains are produced for performance of yagna, sacrifice, and yagna is born of prescribed duties. Text 15. Karma Brahma Bhutavan Itvide Brahma Sara Samut Bhavan Tasmat Sarva Gatam Brahma Nityam Yagne Pratishtitam. Regulated activities are prescribed in the Vedas. And the Vedas are directly manifested from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Consequently, the all-pervading transcendence is eternally situated in acts of sacrifice. Text 16. Evam pravittatam chakram nanu varta itha yaha agayu indiyatamo mogam pathasa jivati. My dear Arjun, one who does not follow in human life the cycle of sacrifice thus established by the Vedas certainly leads a life full of sin, living only for the satisfaction of the senses. Such a person lives in vain. Text 17. Yastva atma rati evasyad, atma triptas jamana vaha. Atmani evacha santushtas, tasya karyam navidyate. But for one who takes pleasure in the self, whose human life is one of self realization, and who is satisfied in the self, only fully situated, for him there is no duty. Text 18. Neva tasya kritenarto, nakrotenaha kaschana. A self-realized man has no purpose to fulfill in the discharge of his prescribed duties, nor has he any reason not to perform such work, nor has he any need to depend on any other living beings. Text 19. Tasmat asakta satatam. Karyam karma samacharam ashatto hi acharan karma param apnoti purushaha. 
<clears throat> Therefore, without being attached to the fruits of activities, one should act as a matter of duty, for by work, working without attachment, one attains supreme. Text 20. Karma neva hi samshidham arshi arshtitha janak janakadayaha loka sangraham av eva pi sampashyan kartum arhasi. Kings such as Janak attain perfection slowly by performance of prescribed duties. Therefore, just for the sake of educating the people in general, you should perform your work. Text 21. Yad yad acharati sestas tad tad evataro chana savat pramanam kurute lokas tad anuvartate. Whatever action, whatever action a great man performs, common men follow. And whatever standards he sets by exemplary acts, all the world pursues. Text 22. Name parthasti kartavyam trishu loke shu kenchanam nana vaptam avaptavyam vata eva chakarmani. O son of Parth, there is no work prescribed for me within all the three planetary systems, nor am I in want of anything, nor have I a need to obtain anything, and yet I am engaged in prescribed duties. Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, thank you so much. Uh, Yashwini Mataji, thank you for reciting the Sanskrit. And uh, Banutane Mataji, very nicely done English. Thank you so much, both of you. Hare Krishna. Great, let me just stop sharing this and we can go on to the uh, PowerPoint. Okay, hopefully you can see the screen now. And uh, just adjust a few things here. Okay, so we're going to continue reading the chapter three. Uh, we'll read that chapter three. Uh, and let's just do a small recap. We're just in the beginning of the chapter. So the first two verses spoke about renunciation or what Virgin is asking uh, to Krishna to clarify. That's the first two verses. And then from three to nine, it's the Nishkam Karma Yoga section. So we are just in the beginning of that section. You did text three yesterday. Today we will continue and uh, start with text four. So Bhagavad Gita, chapter three, text four. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 3, Karma Yoga, Text 4. Na karma nam anarambhan, naish karmyam purushoshnate, na cha sanya sanad eva, siddhim samadhigachati. Translation of Prabhupada, Pashya Prabhupada, Pashya Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Not by merely abstaining from work can one achieve freedom from reaction, nor by renunciation alone can one attain perfection. Report. Uh, let's see what we can see here. Uh, let's see, Dilip. Would you be able to unmute and read the purple, please? Mm, okay, 
looks like Philip's not unmuting. Uh, okay, let's see who else I can find that hasn't spoken recently. A Jay, somebody called Jay. Jay can unmute and read the purple, please. It's always like that, isn't it? The first two never work out for some reason. Let's see now. Okay, I'm going to try and find out somebody who I know is there. Okay. Kusum Mataji, are you able to unmute and read the purple, please? Yes, Prabhuji, I can do that. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky. Thank you. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. The renounced order of life can be accepted when one has been purified by the discharge of the prescribed form of duties, which are laid down just to purify the hearts of materialistic men. Without purification, one cannot attain success by abruptly adopting the fourth order of life, sannyasa. According to the empirical philosophers, simply by adopting sannyasa or retiring from fruitive activities, one at once becomes as good as Narayan. But Lord Krishna does not approve this principle. Without purification of heart, sannyasa is simply a disturbance to the social order. On the other hand, if someone takes to the transcendental service of the Lord, even without discharging his prescribed duties, whatever he may be able to advance in the course is accepted by the Lord, Buddhi Yoga. Swa alpam api asya dharmasya trayate mahato bhayat. Even a slight performance of such a principle enable ones to overcome great difficulties. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Gusumata Ji, Shapopada Ki Jai. Jai. Om Akyanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Asmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Gurum Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Gurum Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Ragunathan Vitam Thams Jeevam Sadavaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Svitamsha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Deena Bandho Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchan Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Nama Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadada Shri Vasadi Kaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai So welcome everybody well, welcome once again to the chat class we will just recap the first three texts because we're right in the beginning so we remind ourselves where we are so the first text, Arjuna is actually asking for clarification. He's saying to Krishna, you know, you've given me all this wonderful philosophy in the second chapter. And as we know, second chapter was the um, summary of the Bhagavad Gita. So in, it's packed with the, all the philosophy. And within that philosophy, Krishna explained about intelligence, fruity work, etc., etc., etc. 
So he's saying, if you're saying that intelligence is better than fruity work, then why are you engage, in, engaging me in this, what is a ghastly warfare? And then his second text is saying, you know, I, I'm now confused. So please be clear. Tell me directly, decisively, what will be beneficial for me? So now, uh, in, in, yesterday, the third test, Krishna begins to, to reply. And he says, there are two classes of men uh, who try to realize themselves, the self, the self and, and, and he says one is empirical, philosophical speculation, and other type of men is devotional service. So from this verse onwards, Krishna is going to uh, uh, answer Arjuna's questions and, and point out the defects in his desire. But don't forget, right now Arjuna's mindset is that he wants to give up the war and not fight. He would rather retire and go to the forest. So Krishna is going to start showing him the defects of his, his, his sort of mindset right now. So, as usual, let's go into the purport and see what Prabhupada is saying. So, Prabhupada says the very first line, he says, the renounced order of life can be accepted when one has purified, once one has been purified by the discharge of the prescribed form of duties, which are laid down just to purify the hearts of materialistic men. So, a question here. So, what do you think Krishna is speaking about here, this, this particular and the prescribed form of duties. Can anybody guess? It's way forward. What are the kind of duties which are laid down to purify materialistic men? Prabhuti? Yes? Is the prescribed form of duties as per the Varnasham system, which yeah, is created by Krishna? Thank you, Puja Mataji. Exactly, exactly. I was going to, if nobody spoke, I was, I was going to give this picture as a clue. But yes, he's speaking about the Varnashram system. So, another question Who created this Varnashram system? Krishna. Krishna, exactly. Anybody know the verse where he declares that I, 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 I have created it? Fourth chapter 31. Sorry, for 13, for chapter text 13. Sure. Yes. Um, and, and then I've forgotten, sorry. Okay. Krishna. Rupa Mataji, I'll see, forgive you the first line, I'm sure you get it. Chatur Vanyam Maya Shristam. Uh, yeah, Chatur Vanyam Maya Shristam Guna Karma Vivagasha. Uh, then I've forgotten the name. Okay. Third, Kataram, second Kataram, Kataram, Vidya Kataram, Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Rupa Maharaji. So, yeah, that's the verse. Chaturvanya Maya Shristam, Guna Karma Vibhagasha, Asya Kataram, Apimam, Vidya Kataram, Avyayam. And the translation reads According to the three modes of material nature, and see here, Krishna is saying that I didn't just whimsically set up this system, but the system is based on the three modes of material nature. Everything in the material nature is working around these three modes. So similarly, he set up, Krishna has actually uh, uh, created the Varnashram system based on this. So according to the three modes of material nature and work associated with them, the four divisions of human society are created by me. And then he's clarifying one more thing, that although I am the creator of this system, you should know that I am yet the non-doer, being unchangeable. So the fact is that all, all uh, conditioned living entities, our bodies are changing, our situations are changing all the time. Whereas Krishna is beyond the three modes, and therefore he is, he says he's the non-doer, in, in the sense that he is not acting within the modes. He is beyond the modes. So next thing is, what is the purpose of the Varnashram system? What's, what's the purpose of Varnashram Dharma? The clue is in the, in the verse, or in, in, in the, sorry, not verse, but in this first line of purpose. Is it for the purification or to know about Krishna? Yes, yes, thank you, Prabhu, thank you. So the Varnashram, it is a gradual system to purify conditioned souls who are inimical to the Supreme Lord. So uh, uh, was it Venkat Prabhu? Yeah, Venkat Prabhu covered both points, purification, and inclination towards the Lord. That is what the system is set up for. 
and and I, I just picked up some purpose from I forget where I took this from, where Prabhupada says the purpose, this is the purpose of the Vardhanasam system, is to accelerate the transit, the transcendental qualities of the individual so that he may gradually realize his spiritual identification and act in order to get free from the material bondage of conditioned life. It is a system by which a live, uh, the civilized human being can successfully perform the human mission, which is to be distinguished from the animal propensities of eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. So, ahar, nidra, bhaya, maithun. So, these four activities, every living entity, starting from the little ant all the way to Lord Brahma, we are all doing this. But what distinguishes the human beings from the animals is they have one more thing, and that is they have a system, some kind of a system of religion, of religion. whether it's here in India, or, or sorry, whether it's in India, or whether it's here, whether it's in USA, whether it's in Timbuktu, or even the, the remotest part of Africa, you will find that there is some kind of the belief they have, however sort of undeveloped it may be, their system, but there is some system of religion. And this is what distinguishes human beings from animals. And what is a, uh, it says, a system by which the civilized human being can successfully perform the human mission. What is a human mission? The human mission is described by Sutta Goswami in the first canto, second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, text six. So as I have said, I must have mentioned this, this verse many, many times, I'm one of my favorite verses. Savai pumsam paro dharmo yato bhaktir adhoksha jay. And the translation goes that the supreme occupation for all humanity is that by which a person can attain to loving devotional service to the transcendent Lord. And such devotional service must be un unmotivated and un un uninterrupted for it to completely satisfy the self. So this is the mission. We must keep that in, in our mind all the time. Whatever activities we do, we must try and see if that activity is taking me closer to this goal of yayatma uh, supersidati, to satisfy the soul. So Prabhupada writes again in the purport of uh, Chaitanya Charitamata Mother Lila 22, 142. The Varnashram institution is planned in such a way that one will not commit sinful activities. Material existence continues due to sinful activity. When one acts sinfully in this life, he gets a suitable body for the next life. When one acts, uh, one again acts sinfully, it takes on another material body. In this way, one is continually under the influence of material nature. So this is the cycle of birth and death, the sansar. Because we can't get away from the sinful activities, we are perpetually one after the other creating material bodies. But uh, uh, an intelligent person, intelligent, wise person, who has been uh, given the association of pure devotees and who has been taught the purpose of human life, will not make this mistake and try at least, at least make a big effort to try and get break out of this cycle and, and stop committing sinful life, follow the Varnasam system, or as, as it, is, it will be said in this verse later on, if you, if you find that difficult, you don't have to do all that. Just go and take take on take to devotional service of the Lord, and that's your shortcut. So, we just spoke about perpetually getting new material bodies, and that is again explained by Rishabhadev when he's instructing his sons in the fifth canto, fifth chapter, text five. Parabhavastavadabhavastavadabhotajato yavana jigna satatma tatvam. Yavat kriya stavad idam manove karmatma ka yena sharira bandha. Very, very nice instructive verse. This, as long as one does not inquire about the spiritual values of life, one is defeated and subjected to miseries arising from ignorance. Be it sinful or pious, karma has its resultant actions. If a person is engaged in any kind of karma, his mind is called karmatmaka colored with fruit of activity. As long as the mind is impure, consciousness is unclear. 
as, and as long as one is absorbed in fruitive activity, he has to accept the material body. So this is the point. As just continuing from the last, last slide, we need to, he says, any kind of karma, of course, and we all know that even pious karma is not good because then we have to come back to enjoy the fruits of our piety. So we need to break away from good and bad karma and just do a karma, meaning do activities which do not incur any kind of karma. And that way we can slowly make our way out. What does a karma mean? Anybody, how can we do duties which do not incur any karma? Somebody? Doing in the mind, thinking, sorry. Sorry. Prescribe, prescribe duties uh, with knowledge and detachment to please Krishna. Exactly. Devotional service. Devotional service. A, a, karma, a karma activities? Yeah, a karma activities actually means exactly what what yeah. explained. Venk Venkat Dabu was saying the same thing. That those karma activities are literally activities done for the pleasure of the Lord, not for our pleasure. Anything you do for our pleasure is going to create karma. That will be explained in, in some verses later on in this in this uh, chapter too. But our karma means doing things without, without attachment to the future results and doing it simply to please the Lord, basically doing devotional service. Then moving on onto the purport, Prabhupada is saying, without purification, one cannot attain success by abruptly adopting the fourth order of life, sannyas. So, Sanyas taking, so we have many, many examples, especially in India, where people sentimentally start to think about, oh, I want to take sannyas now or whatever, but they're not really purified their mind yet. You know, if you either, there's two ways you can actually become purified. One is to follow the Varnasam system properly, which is not possible now, nowadays because the system doesn't exist in, in the way it should have been done. So the other op opportunity is to fully engage in divorce service and that can purify our, our mind. Cheto darpan majanam. So once you are purified that way, then you are able to sustain the renunciation, uh, the, the stage of renunciation. Otherwise, it's very, very difficult. So if prematurely somebody is taken renunciation, uh, then it will lead, he really says, he said, it will neither lead to any freedom or, uh, or free, free, freedom of reaction, nor it will lead to perfection of any kind of liberation. Really, no, nothing will be achieved because you, we will fall down. So there's a text in Chaitanya Charitamrita Mandalaya 22112, um, where it said, uh, yeah, 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 And the translation goes, if one simply maintains an official position in the four varnas and ashrams, but does not worship the Supreme Lord Vishnu, he falls down from his puffed up position into the hellish condition. So, patantiyada, which means people who are pretending to be renounced, but their minds are not, not clear. They will be always thinking about, although they're, they're outwardly, they're thinking that they are, they are renounced, but inwardly they're not ready and their mind will be polluted. Eventually they'll fall down and they'll go to a worse position than they were before. Prabhupada so, continues. According to the empiric philosophers, simply by adopting sannyas or retiring from fugitive activities, one at once becomes as good as Narayan. But Lord Krishna does not approve this principle. Without purification of heart, sannyas is simply a disturbance to the social order. So you see, there are many, many um, punts in India where they, the, especially the Mayavadi kind of punts, where they would. Uh, Take sannyas and, and all those sannyasis, like we, we call our sannyasis Maharaj, for example, Maharaj or Swami, but they call them Narayan because in their, in their belief, as soon as, as soon as somebody has taken the path of sannyas, he is as good as the Lord Himself. They, they, they address each other as Narayan. But Krishna doesn't agree with that. You can see clearly that you know, this, this kind of sannyas will only cause disturbance. So whenever things are done, Avidhi Purvak, things are done without the proper process, proper spiritual process, under the guidance of a proper system and a proper guru, 
people will end up causing disturbance. And Rup Rupa Goswami confirms it in, in, in the Bhakti Ritamadas in the 1 to 101. He says, Shruti Smriti Puranadi Pancharatra Vidim Vina Aikantiki Hare Bhakti Utpatiyaiva Kalpate. Devotional service to the Lord, even devotional service, which is actually Aikantiki, which means even it may be actually single minded. Somebody may be really focused in, in, in the devotion. But if it is not done, According to the Vedic literatures, like the Upanishads, Puranas, Nahad, Pancharatra, then it is simply an unnecessary dis disturbance in society. So, you know, pe sometimes people don't follow the rules and regulations and they just carry on uh, whimsically, having their own ideas about how, how to do divorce and service. That, again, is something that cause, causes disturbance in society. See, the external appearance is not. What makes a devotee? I'm here wearing a kurta, I've got a dhoti, I've got my tilak on, uh, I have uh, uh, the sacred thread. All that is external. But Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasakur, is he says that just by external appearance, one does not become a devotee. So, you know, just one may dress like a devotee, but if his mentality is crooked, then he is called, what is it called in his case? He calls him. Uh, uh, a Kali Chela. A Kali Chela. Kali Chela. Anybody can guess what a Kali Chela would mean? We, Gujarati, Hindi, we have the word Chela. It's, it, means, uh, it means follower. But, um, uh -huh. uh, so you're, you're quite close. Follower of Kali, or in this case, it's actually they say it's agent of Kali. Okay. Okay. Such a person who is actually not internally purified, according to this like, as per instruction, this verse, but if he is pretending, then he is like an agent of Kali. So Krishna is emphasizing here uh, that you know internal transformation is a lot more important than the externals. Of course, there's, externals do help, I must say. Externals help, especially in the beginning, when you're just starting uh, to be become serious by putting on the clothes you do feel serious, you know? For example, if you've got a dhoti on and a telecon, you will not walk into a pub, for example, because you will be completely out of place. So like that. Also, when people see you, uh, you know, they, they, they see you as a devotee, so you will uh, automatically not behave in certain ways. You know, a devotee doesn't behave in any abominable, abominable way. So he won't be, be doing things like that devotees not. So by putting on clothes, certainly is helpful, but the, if, if, if our mind is not pure still, then it, the, the, the externals really are, are, are no point. So now we talk about learning ashrams. Can anybody tell us what ashrams do devotees fall into? Now, when I put, when I said put the word devotee here, I should have put pure devotees. So people who actually uh, you know, reach a high level of devotion. Which ashram do they fall in? Which varna, which ashram? Is it uh, uh, Brahman and uh, Brahman one? Uh, I don't know, Ashram or Sanyas? Sanyas Ashram. Okay, so, so yeah, if you look at the, uh, the ashrams, then yes, the top are Brahman and Sanyas, right? Yeah. So yeah. That would, that's what we would think. But here, this is what Prabhupada is saying in, in his purport of 413. He just this, we tried the 413. Uh, Rupa Mataji recited it. So we'll, uh, let's just see what Prabhupada says. A person, a person in Krishna consciousness, however, is above even the Brahmanas. Although Brahmanas by quality are supposed to know about Brahman, the supreme absolute truth, most of them approach only the impersonal Brahman manifestation of Lord Krishna. But a man who transcends the limited knowledge of a Brahmana and reaches the knowledge of the Supreme Personality of God and Lord Krishna, becomes a person in Krishna consciousness, or in other words, a Vaishnava. And as Krishna is as, and as Krishna is transcendental to this system of the four divisions of human society, a person in Krishna consciousness is also transcendental to all divisions of human society, whether we consider the divisions of community, nations, or species. So very important information here. So a Vaishnava is beyond 
the Varnashram system. Because we, once you have perfected your Krishna consciousness, then we rise above the Varnashram system. Varnashram system is material. Krishna, as we heard earlier, he created this system for people to reach to the stage of Vaishnava. Once you reach the stage of Vaishnava, we then are beyond Varnashram system. And this is confirmed by Chaitanya, 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 sorry, uh, by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When he's uh, dancing in front of the Lord Jagannath in the Rath Yatra, uh, it is all described beautifully in the 13th chapter of Madhya Leela. In text 80, he is reciting this particular quote from scriptures talking about Vaishnavas. And he says, Naham vipra nacha nirapatir napi vaisho na sudra. Naham varni nacha grihapatir na vanasto yatirva. Kintu prodya nikhila parmananda purnama purnama abdir abdir. Kopi bhartu pata kamalayo dasa dasa hanudasa. So, Naham vipra. Vipra means Brahman. I am not a Brahman. Nacha narapatir. No, I am a Kshatriya. Narapatir is Kshatriya, so leader of the, of the, of the people is Kshatriya. Nati Vaishya, I'm not even a Vaishya. Na Sudra, I'm not even a Shudra. Right. Naham Varani, Varani refers to a Brahmachari because a Brahmachari can belong to any of the Varnas. So, no, I'm not a Varani, I'm not a Brahmachari. Naha Griha, Grihapatir, I'm not a, a Grihasta. Na Vanasto, I'm not a, a Vanasta. Yatir means uh, sannyasi, yatirva. So see all these eight, I am not, he says. Kintu prodya nikhla paraman and the purnamit abdre kopi kopi bhartur padakamalayo das das and das. So the question is, so who are you then if you're not this? He says, gopi bhartur. So I am, uh, I am servant dasa das and das. I'm the servant of the servant of the servant of the lotus feet of the maintainer of the gopis, gopi bhartur. It's with the translation. I'm not a Brahmana, I'm not a Kshatriya, I am not a Vaishya or Sudra, nor am I a Brahmachari, a householder, or a Vanaprastha or Sanyasi. I identify, identify myself, myself, identify myself only as a servant of the servant of the servant of the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, the maintainer of the gopis. He is like an like an ocean of nectar, and he is the cause of the universe, universal transcendental bliss. He is always existing within. Brilliance. So this, la this last sentence is the third line. Kintu Prodya Nikala Paramananda Purnamita Abdeh. So a pure Vaishnava is beyond the, the whole system. Continuing quickly on to the text, uh, uh, Purport again. Purport is saying, on the other hand, if someone takes to the transcendental service of the Lord, even without discharging his prescribed duties, whether he may be able to advance in the, in, in, in the course, is accepted by the Lord, Buddha Yoga. Swapa mapiyasya dharmasya trayate mahato bayat. Even a slight performance of such principle enables one to overcome the greatest difficulties. So this is the famous verse in the in the, uh, second chapter, 240, which we did recently. Anybody remember this verse? Talks about the little advancement on this path can save you from the most from greatest danger. Neha brikama nasho sti pastevayo na vidyati swapam apyasa dharmasya tayate mahato bhaya. In this endeavor, there is no loss or diminution. This endeavor meaning in devotional service life. There is no loss or diminution. And a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear. So what is the most dangerous type of fear? Anybody tell me? Fear of death. Um, falling down. What is going to be the next life? Rather yes. falling down or rising up? Exactly. So the thing is, yes. So we, one more thing. When, when we're thinking materially, we're thinking death is the most frightful thing. But actually, when we become advanced in devotional service, we are no longer afraid of death. People are afraid of death because of um, lack of knowledge, because of what you, what you, what's the term? Because of um, fear of the unknown, right? We are, we are afraid because we don't know what's going to happen to us after death. But devotees, once they've advanced, they know what's going to happen to them. 
they know exactly where they're going. So they have confidence. So for them, they realize death is just a change of body. I am not this body. Once they're completely firm on that philosophy, they will not be afraid of death. So for devotees, the real bigger the danger, the most danger of type of fear is to come back in this material world and especially to come back in a lower yoni, in, in some abominable, abominable family where you don't get a chance to continue your devotion service. That is the biggest fear. So coming back to this particular verse, he says, in this endeavor, there is no loss of diminution and a little advancement. So even if you've done a little bit of bhakti, we've done a little bit of devotion service, Krishna guarantees in 641, he says, Say that an unsuccessful yogi, which refers to the case, people who have done just a little bit of service, uh, devotion service, they have not perfected their life yet, devotional life. What happens to them? He says, they are given a chance to take birth in that 641, it is says, Suchi naam shrimatam gehe. They can take, take birth in a family of righteous people or a, a family of uh, 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 aristocratic family. So in both those situations, you're not struggling to make ends meet and you are able to continue your, our devotion service. So this is what this verse is, this particular is saying, that even a slight purport says in this purport, even a slight performance of such principle enables one to overcome the greatest difficulties. So this is as much as I got from this uh, purport. Uh, before we open to questions and comments, I just want to remind everybody about the Vadar campaign. We're coming down to our last couple of weeks. So please be focused. Let's all uh, focus on distributing Bhagavatam sets. Um, this week, uh, actually starting today, we got some wonderful presentations by the Gormansa kids. So if you have any friends, family, uh, anybody who you want to invite, please give them this, the, the link. Uh, I'll show the link in the, in the next uh, uh, slide. And uh, you will also see the link on, on various platforms that Divina Prabhu has shared. So you give them the link, let them come and listen to the kids glorify the Bhagavatam to be convinced to try and either sponsor a Bhagavatam set or invite Bhagavatam to their home. So dates are here. Uh, it's like uh, 6, 7.30 today. So today we missed it. Tomorrow is 6 p.m. Thursday, 7.30, Friday, 6 p.m., and Saturday, 10 a.m. in the morning. These are nice sessions. This is the, uh, the uh, uh, poster for that, which, which I will share on, 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 on the three groups uh, so that everybody has access to it. And you can get the link there and uh, pass it on to your friends. So devotees, I will uh, stop here and uh, I can invite, I will invite comments, Questions, corrections, please. Hare Krishna. I put my pranam to you. Hare Krishna, Bhuja I Madhuri. ask you something. Yes. Now, in this, in the Kali Yuga, we don't have Varnashram system. So, when we do any activities, it says it equals a, a sin. So, is there a way out of that? Yes. Uh, so, Bhuja Madhuri, nice question. Thank you. So, because we don't have a Varnashram system, um, you are always encouraging, say, whatever we do, exactly right. But the point now is that there's three kinds of karma. There's, ak, there's, there's karma, which is just normal activities, and that could be good or bad. But then there's specifically we karma, which, which are going to give us bad reactions. So those two certainly we need to avoid. And what we need to focus on is a karma, as we were saying in, during the class. A karma means doing activities. If we do activities which are uh, not for our selfish benefit, then that's called a karma, especially if you do it for the, uh, for the purpose of Krishna. Yes. So here I've got um, HK, I forget again the name, but it's, it's sorry, what is the difference between Nishkam karma and a karma? So this, is, this question ties in with Puja Mathis's question. So Nishkam karma, it is actually. Um, a little subtle difference. They're both very similar, but very subtle difference. Nishkam karma is basically saying that I'm going to this, like, this, like, do this activity, and I'm, I am going to um, not have any asha for the fruits. So I will have nothing to do with the fruits, uh, or I will not have no attachment to the fruits. So that's, that's Nishkam karma. 
But akarma actually means devotional service. Akarma means that I'm doing this duty specifically to please Krishna. Yeah. So that uh, both of these actually, nishkam karma and akarma, will not give you uh, reaction. But of course, akarma is better because that will give you not just no reaction, but it will give you also positive uh, devotional piety. Yes. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Bhujya Mataji. Thank you. Okay. Hare Krishna, back. Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for a wonderful class, Prabhuji. Um, I just want to again clarify this um, akarma bit. Um, so I, ha I had a conversation with someone today, and I just by happened to say that oh, in the evening, uh, the Lord eats whatever I prepare for the family. And so she was a very senior devotee and she says, no, you need to rephrase it that yes. we eat whatever we offer to the Lord. And I thought, oh my God, that's just, so it was the, it was meant to be as if I'm doing it for the Lord, but my consciousness, polluted consciousness did not allow me to say it in the right, in the right mood. Uh, so does that mean it was a karma or not really? Because my, obviously the reason I cook in the evening is to offer to the Lord and we exactly. then on the prashad but my consciousness didn't allow me to say it in the right way so i just yeah. wanted your view on that so so Hema, Hema Mataji, having i have information i know about your sadhana i know about how, how diligently you were doing so you and Chailesh Prabhu, both of you doing such wonderful uh, sadhana so i do know that in your case this was probably just a slip of tongue because i do know that your consciousness is in the right place it is just at that time because of habit of how we normally speak yeah, we are we sort of say something like that. But you, you're quite right. You you know, we, we must have that focus and that devotee. You must thank that devotee for, for focusing your mind because this way, yes. if you will never forget now. <laughs> you yes. will always remember this. So we need friends like that to, to remind us and, and keep Absolutely. us on the narrow. Yeah. Yes, I did thank her a lot for uh, 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 helping me to think of it differently. But I suppose that makes me think that there is conscious level and there is practical level. Um, at which we operate and um, the two need to merge at some point which is uh, where the struggle yeah. is. <laughs> it is always a struggle because don't forget we have been conditioned for many many lifetimes so it's a question of practice a question of being reminded and also a question of having good friends who will remind us because you know there will be friends so-called friends who out of you know just out of just you know being 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 nice or demon, don't, don't want to upset us they will not say anything but real friends will say things like this right uh, even sometimes worse, somebody will, can, can, can agree or somebody will tell you off if you're going off, off track. Absolutely. And that's why we need one or two good friends like that. But thank you yes. for sharing that with us. It's very, very good. Thank very you, good. Prabhuji. Thank, thank you very much. So I've got a question on the chat here from Jay Prabhu. It says, what distinguishes a pure devotee from a Brahman? Uh, can somebody who is a Brahman uh, not be a pure devotee too? We commonly refer to Hindu priests who serve in our temples as Brahmins. Are they not pure devotees? Yeah, very nice question, actually. Very nice question. So what is a Brahman? A Brahman, so Brahma Janati the Brahmana. So Brahman is one who knows Brahman. So Brahman, the word Brahman can it, it, many, many different uses for this particular word. Brahman refers to, to the to spirituality generally, refers to the spiritual world, refers to the Supreme Lord himself. Brahman also, also refers to the living entity because we are also eternal and we are also spiritual. So like that. But in this case, Brahma, Jana, Brahma Janati Iti Brahman. So a person who knows Brahma. So as we know that uh, the supreme absolute truth can be reckoned, can be uh, described in three or can be uh, realized in three ways. Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagwan. So a Brahmana not necessarily is always in the Bhagwan uh, realization platform. A Brahmana, as Prabhupada said in the Prabhupada, mostly they are in the impersonal Brahma Jyoti stage. So if they're at that stage, certainly they, this, is, this is what distinguishes them from a Vaishnava. A Vaishnava is never below. A Vaishnava, me, a Vaishnava means a worshipper of Vishnu or Krishna. So a Vaishnava by definition is on the personal realization of the Supreme Lord. But a, a Brahmana may or may not be 
uh, at the personal realization. So this is the distinguishing mark. If a, if a brahmana, like as you say, on the on our all in a, at at the altar, uh, we have we refer to the only brahmana can do the arti, brahmana can do the cooking for the Lord and all that. So those brahmanas, we are we are saying we refer to the term brahmana in ISKCON, especially because we have two initiations. One is the Harinam initiation. The second is the Brahman initiation. Because Shastra, because in Shastra it is mentioned that only a Brahmana can do deity worship on the altar. Deity worship at home, everybody can do. But deity worship in, on the altar, cooking for the deities, can only be done by a Brahmana. So for that reason, we have the second initiation where, where, where the Brahmanas, the qualified Brahmanas, are then given the right to go on the altar and do everything. But those Iskon Brahmanas are almost also Vaishnavas. But outside, when you see a Brahmana, you may call a Pandit to your home for some, you know, Havan or whatever, that Brahmana is not necessarily a Vaishnava. So that is the, the, the distinguishing mark. I hope that makes sense, Jay Prabhu. And your last point is, are there no pure devotees? So yes. yes. Sorry, Jay, but we are just finishing. Yeah, I, I, I so understand. Yeah. If somebody serves in a, a non iskon temple as a Brahman, I mean, now they're serving the Lord. I mean, can they still be considered as pure devotees? Or, or oh, yeah. Just... So, yeah, exactly. I was going to just address that. So the, see, whether they are pure devotees or not, that, of course, you know, we can't say that people who are serving in non iskon temples are not pure devotees. Certainly, no, we cannot be that, uh, that uh, you know, uh, selfish. No. Whether the person is a pure devotee or not, it depends on the consciousness. So even if the, the Brahmana serving in, in, in a temple, non-ISKCON temple, even if he is not in the, in the personal realization, if he is really fixed in his Paramatma uh, realization or Brahman realization, even then he can be a pure devotee, certainly can be a pure devotee, not, no, no doubt about it, because all three are very transcendental stages. So we're not discriminating that way. Uh, but yes, if they are firm in, in, in their realization, they can be pure devotees in, in their own right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Jai Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Makundari Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. I just wanted to mention, does it depend on the inner parampara system, how you've been initiated? Because um, normally in India, some of the brahmanas they are born from you know as a tradition their brahmana family uh could that be uh, uh, you know without being in there in the parampara system like you know our we are on the brahma brahma's um uh, yeah. sampraday with the others may not be in the kind of any sampraday could they be yeah. still the brahman in a pure pure stage yeah so good good point you're making there uh Palika mataji so traditionally as we know in india a Brahmana is by birth, mm. whereas Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and in our system, uh, uh, the Brahmana is not by birth. Uh, a Brahmana is, is by his qualities or by his, his uh, attributes. So if there is uh, a, a, a Brahmana, because if, just because he, he's doing the seva in the temple, it's really because he's born in the Brahmana family. And now, th that doesn't necessarily disqualify him, right? It all depends on the individual consciousness. That person, Although we are saying that you know a, a, a person born in, in, in a Brahmana family is not necessarily a Brahmana unless he's got the qualities. So you know that person born in that family may actually have the qualities there already, right? So we can't discount it. There, there are many, many Brahmana families, especially in India, where they have maintained purity, right? Many, many have lost it, of course, but there are still many who have maintained uh, their purity. And, and, and I'm, I'm thinking about, about some uh, senior devotees in, in the Vallabha um, Sampradaya. Uh, and they have generations of devotees coming from families because they, they, they go through the, the lineage of family brahmanas. But, but I do know of them, some of them who are very, very pure because their family have, have maintained the culture, maintained the purity. So doesn't disqualify them. They still are pure. But yes, if they are in the family and they're not, uh, uh, in the right, they don't have the right attributes and not practicing properly, then yes, then of course, then we would not call them Brahmanas. But they, they need to be in a parampara system, no? To, to yes, but then they are. 
so this again, with just the example I was giving, they are very much in, in the parampara system. Yeah. The Vallabha the Sampradaya, which is the uh, Pushti Marga, which mm -hmm. is in the uh, uh, Rudra Sampradaya. So they're very much part of the Sampradaya. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Venkat Prabhu. Okay. Sorry if, uh, if you have answered this query already, uh, then maybe I'll hear in the recordings. Um, you know, in the Bhakti Ratam Rasam Prasin, it said uh, uh, like devotion service of Lord that ignores the authorized Vedic literatures is just unnecessary disturbance to the society. Mm. Can you a little bit explain? Because the other way I know I can, I, it makes maybe so many examples Prabhupada gave, I understood that. Even if you don't follow the Vedic, you doing. I mean, don't without devotion, just following the Vedic is no use. That I understood. But this other way, you do the devotion, but don't follow the Vedas. It's still it's just called disturbance. So I'm I'm a bit confused, and I think we can't read all the Vedas and Puranas, understand them. So if you could just give me some, I let them. Yeah, perfect. So thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. So generally speaking, um, so whatever uh, we're doing. We, there has to, it has to be have, it must have basis on Shastra. That's for sure, okay? Because uh, uh, you're, even if you say, okay, now I'm just doing pure deposit service, but I don't care about the Shastras. That doesn't make sense. Even, so in ISKCON we say, okay, we don't put so much emphasis on the Vedas, for example, because the Vedas are vast. The Vedas are, they can have so many different conflicting views seemingly, yeah, for us. So it's difficult for us. So for us, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and uh, the Goswamis, and then uh, the other acharyas along the way have simplified things out. They have taken all the information from the Vedas, et cetera, et cetera, and given us the books that we follow and the translations, the Bhagavatam translations, the Bhagavad Gita translations, all the other books, which Upanishad and everything. So we have all the information there. So we are, as long as we are following that, then we are following the, the, the Shastras. But the here situation is the, the, the kind of people that that particular verse is talking about is that they uh, start off under a guru, for example, learning things, but then suddenly they decide that, okay, I know it, I know it all, and then they ignore the shastras and create their own systems and, and start, you know, having uh, doing things in a whimsical way, right? Not based on shastra. So those kind of people are referred to in this in this in this verse. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Okay, devotees, it's 10 to 9. We should uh, call it a day. Thank you so much for your time once again. Thank you so much for